Well, today is Valentine's Day and joining us to tell us about the candy that is synonymous with the day for lovers is Africa 54's Ndimi Akemwari Kalieli. Hello, Ndimi. Well, thank you, Vincent. It is Valentine's Day and I'm all dressed in Valentine's Day color, which is red. And of course, Valentine's Day is celebrated annually in many countries on this day, February 14th. Lovers show each other love by exchanging flowers, cards, and especially chocolates. According to industry t statistics in the U.S. alone, about 27 million kilograms, the 60 million pounds of chocolate candy, worth about 350 million U.S. dollars, are sold during Valentine's week. VOA's June So takes us to one popular chocolate festival outside Washington just a week before Valentine's. From fountains and colorful pastries to candies, cupcakes, and ice cream, Everything at the Chocolate Lovers Festival in Old Town, Fairfax, Virginia, is made of chocolate. Oh, unbelievable. This dark chocolate, mm, so good. Yeah, yummy. Okay, you like it? Children and adults alike indulged in chocolate overload. I love the variety. I think we've just started. We've got the chocolate fountain. We had some chocolate dipped marshmallows downstairs. Uh, we haven't had the ice cream yet. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll continue. That's plain chocolate. The two-day festival, held on a weekend before Valentine's Day, is in its 21st year. It's good. Leslie Herman is the chair of the event. Every year it gets larger. So, and it doesn't matter what the weather is, unless it's a huge snowstorm and you can't drive in it, but folks come out, rain, snow, cold, usually in an attendance of about 10,000 people that come out. Many visitors start their chocolate day with a chocolate chip pancake breakfast served by volunteers. In the chocolate tasting area, about 40 local vendors showcase their products. How are we doing this? Debbie Walsh has been bringing a variety of chocolate concoctions here for 20 years. I enjoy coming here each and every year, meeting a lot of the same faces each and every year. And, and making people happy and giving them good chocolates. I'm often top seller. The festival offers some sweet competitions as well, such as the Chocolate Challenge. Amateur and professional chocolatiers can enter their creations in the contest, sponsored by George Mason University. Joe Wilson is the school's nutrition and food studies department manager. The judges tasted them this morning, but not the public. The entries are judged on taste, precision, and the creation itself. Visitors can also vote for their favorites and bid on donated cakes at the silent auction. Outside the tasting area, there is a decidedly non-chocolate activity offered by a local motorcycle group. We're here today as eye candy. This, uh, all these Harley bikes are fun for people to see and to sit on and to look at and just be sort of an attraction. One of the little things that people do when they come downtown Fairfax to enjoy the Chocolate Lovers Festival. Herman says the festival is not just about chocolate and fun. Part of the benefit is bringing um, business into the downtown. Um, another benefit is the grant recipient that's chosen by our Chocolate Lovers Festival Committee, which this year is Best Buddies. That charitable effort is why Melissa Guzman, who runs a chocolate fountain business, has been participating in the festival for a decade. 25% of all of the monies that are taken in by the vendors are given to a charity that has been selected uh, by the committee. So it allows all of us to be able to give back to our community. And that's something everyone can love. For producer June So, Amy Katz, VOA News. Valentine's Day is a big deal in many African countries too. Many Africans living here in the United States are trying to capitalize on this and offering a different kind of arrangement. And with us today in studio with her own arrangement is Leila Ndiaye Sangowawa, a florist designer from Ivory Coast. She started her company, The Gome Florist, late last year. Her slogan is, oh, my sweetness. Hi, Leila. How are you? So what I, the first thing I noticed is, for one, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. You too. So what I noticed is your arrangement is not really flowers. Actually, they look like flowers. They look like to flowers. To me, they There's are flowers, no flowers. Because you can see some uh, tulips here. You can see some magnolias there. You can see some roses. Mm -hmm. So 
these are edible flowers. That edible makes flowers. it diff different. Okay. They are edible. And so obviously these are for Valentine's Day. Exactly. So tell, tell me about these arrangements and what, may, what was the inspiration behind their design? The design. First of all, I have to talk about the candies themselves mm -hmm. uh, because I use what they call dragées in French and uh, confetti in Italian. Okay. And uh, these are candies made out of Jordan, uh, out of almonds. Oh, okay. In the US they call them Jordan almonds. And the Jordan almond is the oldest candy in the world. Nice. And uh, you can trace it back until the 13th century. Okay. So, and uh, they are usually used to celebrate life and love. Mm -hmm. And uh, each flower uh, means something. Uh, it's a wish, to wish you happiness, to wish you love, to wish you fertility, to wish you prosperity, Lovely. and to wish you wealth. So that's the philosophy behind uh, every bouquet that I design. Okay. So what, what made you pick almonds in particular? I mean, outside the reasons you just explained, was, is it, uh, I mean, of course, there are many uh, nuts and other things that have significance. For you, almonds in particular, why? Why? Because the almond, the soul of the almond is sweet. And then the body of the almond is bitter, like life, sweet and bitter. So uh, what, that's, 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 what, um, I, uh, that's why, principally, I'm using the almonds mm -hmm. and uh, not another candy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, of course, today is Valentine's Day, so these particular uh, arrangements here are to do with Valentine's, but that's not all you do. That's not all you I do. You also target other um, occasions. I, I Tell do. us what these other arrangements signify. Okay, for example, this is a little arrangement for St. Patrick's Day. Okay, the green one. The green one. Uh, you, you see the colors. And uh, also, th these are magnolias, okay. uh, the flowers. And uh, this is a little arrangement for Easter with little roses. Mm -hmm. This is an arrangement with tulips uh, for President's Day mm -hmm. coming in two or three days. Right, and, on Monday. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, this other arrangement is, uh, can be used actually for a man, even for Valentine's, uh, a good alternative to red roses. And then the good thing about them all is that after all is said and done, they're edible. You eat they them are not only they keep... edible, they are delicious, and uh, it is a great alternative to fresh flowers because they are non-perishable. Right. And now, they you... don't die and they don't fade. Right. Yeah. Now, you have an interesting story because this is not your first career or has not been something you've been doing. You're actually in, in politics. Yes. So what made you transition from politics or being a political analyst to making arrangements? It's not a transition. It is exactly what I've learned through the years, uh, throughout the years in politics. Mm -hmm. uh, because my role as a political analyst and before then as a political person mm -hmm. was to make sure that everybody uh, I, I work for, I make their life better and uh, make a life a joyful, a more beautiful life. Mm -hmm. So it's like my experience, the sum of my experience that uh, I transformed into making a different uh, flowers arrangements. Well, thank because you so this much. is how I see life, as okay. beautiful as the flowers. And life is beautiful. It thank is. Thank you so much thank for coming you so to us much on uh, Valentine's okay. Day. Happy Valentine's. All right, well, Vincent, we might have some candy after the show. <laughs> That's yeah. Leila Jai Sangoa, yeah. a florist designer from Ivory Coast, and her company is called the Gourmet Florist. She was here with us on Africa 54 today.